Marhaban. Do you dare to compare? Well, some combinational circuits do. They are called comparators and come in two flavors. Equality comparators, which we'll talk about in this video, simply tell you if two input numbers are equal. Inequality comparators, which we'll discuss next video, have the added feature of identifying which input is larger. Let's say we are given the task of designing a circuit that accepts two bits and outputs high if and only if those two bits are equal. We could accomplish this quickly through our standard design approach. First, this truth table, which shows that when the inputs are 0, 0 or 1, 1, then the output is high. These are the cases where the inputs equal each other. In the other rows, the output is low. That truth table leads directly to this SOP equation. This shows us that Z will be high if A and B are both 0, or if A and B are both 1. That equation converts easily into this AND OR circuit. This is correct, but does this logic remind you of some other simpler operation? This is actually the definition of exclusive NOR. Recall that the truth table for exclusive OR would go 0, 1, 1, 0. And exclusive NOR is the complement of that. We could write the Boolean equation like this, and we could draw the logic circuit as a single gate. In summary, a two-input exclusive NOR gate can be interpreted as a one-bit equality comparator. So, how can we extend that to a two-bit equality comparator? Let's design a circuit that accepts two two-bit numbers and determines if the numbers equal each other. For example, if the input numbers are 1, 0, and 1, 1, then they are not equivalent and the output should be low. But if the numbers are 0, 1, and 0, 1, then they are equivalent and the output should be high. Let's define the numbers as A and B using the subscript notation. For the overall numbers to be equivalent, then each corresponding bit must be equivalent, or A1 must equal B1, and A0 must equal B0. This leads to this simple circuit. The evaluation of individual bits can be done with the exclusive NOR gate, as just discussed. Then an AND gate unites the XNOR outputs because all of the individual bits must match in order for the overall numbers to be equivalent. How do you think we could extend this idea to four bits? By simply extending the pattern. Again, we build a circuit that compares each corresponding individual bit using an exclusive NOR gate. Then, all of those results are fed into a single AND gate. Let's see how this works with an example. We'll have input A be decimal 6 or binary 0, 1, 1, 0. And input B be decimal 7 or binary 0, 1, 1, 1. Bit position 3 is a 0 for both inputs. Thus, the top XNOR gate produces a high. Similarly, bit positions 2 and 1 match each other. But the least significant bits differ. 0 for A and 1 for B. Therefore, this bottom XNOR gate produces a low. Because of that single low input to the AND gate, the final output is low. The numbers are mostly equal, but not exactly equal. Correctly, the circuit tells us that 6 does not equal 7. But if we change this single bit to make input A equal 7, then every one of the XNOR gates produces a high value, and this final output is high. Yes, 7 does equal 7. This is a simple circuit, but useful for many applications. In the next video, we'll explore the more difficult challenge of identifying which input is larger.